Hello again. Now we're going to talk about um, Starfield and how it's changed the Bethesda's game engine based on what I've seen on here, plus a few other little details. Let's start with the game engine. Now, um, every game Bethesda released created a few minor changes to the game engine, some bigger than others. Between Oblivion and Skyrim, for instance, the scripting language completely changed. Also, the uh, nav mesh was introduced, which came with problems, which wasn't resolved for free games, <laughs> which affected modders in a big way, the nav mesh bug. Still see the video on my channel if you want to check that out. So, new features tend to come with new problems. So we'll have that to contend with because this is Bethesda after all and Bethesda are known as Bugfester for a reason. Hopefully though, now that we're Microsoft, that won't happen. Hopefully. <laughs> anyway, so the game engine itself, as we can see, you've got shooting action in this. On the, on the scene you can see right here, you can see it's quite fluid. That's one of the changes that clearly made to the game engine. Because if you see the um, shooting in Fallout and you see the shooting behind me now, you'll see that looks more like a shooter. Fallout always felt a bit clunky. And I would say that if you actually go back to Fallout after playing Starfield, you might think that. You might, you might start registering the fact everything's a bit slower and not quite as fast and it doesn't aim accurately. Because people already mentioned that in the initial Starfield information last year, which was based on the old technology, which was based on Fallout. This is based on new technology. This is ID Soft inside you know Bethesda's game engine so we've got fairly fluid action now and um, plus we're using more weapon mods in this they've got more I say we there so it's using more weapon mods they're using more we yeah, more weapon types ammos they've, they've got a handle on the fact that people like lots of different weapons and they've gone for it so there's a lot of there's a lot of additions to the game engine to support new features like the shooting side of things as well um, I've already mentioned in a previous video that uh, planetary exploration has changed. It worked the same way it's always worked, but how they generate the planets used to be done in an editor. Now, the editor just supplies the information to do it when you first arrive. That's a big difference. And um, when you arrive in a place, you know, say on a planet, and it's just reading a list and suddenly spawning things... That, that used to cause major problems before in the game because it was usually just spawning creatures and equipment and chests, well, chest content. Now it's spawning bases and everything else. Although, technically speaking, it's very, very similar to the way it was working, but the scale is much, much bigger. Um, I would guess that, you know, that the different levels from solar system all the way down would have its own spawn list and it'll be set in stone. That would probably mean that the um, creatures, the level of the creatures will also be set as well based on what they were like when you first arrived. So I'm also expecting that you won't be able to get to those outside out, outer planets where that happens because you won't have the engine upgrades to do it initially. You'd have to upgrade so you can get further out and the further out you get, the more dangerous it gets. That's what I'm expecting. That would actually be quite good for the game, I think. Stack, uh, spacecraft. Now, this is the biggest addition to the game engine. We never had any of that before. It wasn't really... It, it can't even be compared to the level of this thing, which is more of a minor upgrade based on the speed of CPUs and things, allowing more things to be done in real time. We know the lighting is done in real time, for example. Um, which I'll get on to in a minute. It says, but the spaceships and stuff like that, that's the big deal here. Spaceships themselves are basically objects that move around. They're a model that move around, you know, with a prob probably from a cinematic view, you know, where you can see the outside because it just looks better when you're doing spaceships like that. I prefer the cockpit view, but that's just me. But um, the actual internals of the spaceship, they will probably just be like any old player house. In any old game, they'll just have a door and the destination on the door will change from one planet to the other, to the other, to the other. So wherever you are, the external factor of the door will then say, well, we're on planet X at location Y. Spawn me there when I leave the door, when I go through the door. That's another improvement. That is a, that's another change. Um, they didn't normally do that. Um, 
there's a lot, a lot of technical reasons from nav meshing and other reasons, but they didn't normally do that. It led to problems. So having um, a spaceship land and being able to have NPCs walk out the ramp, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. That's another improvement to the game engine because they would have had to nav mesh the ramp so it works everywhere they land and not have any conflicts with the ground itself such as the ramp not meeting the ground properly or you know the NPCs trying to walk under a ramp and getting stuck so you've got a static home which is basically in the void could be in oblivion <laughs> with doors leading to the real world wherever that world may be wherever you are so there's a change right there you could, you could probably put like say the imperial city in space and have the exit to the imperial city lead to any world and it'd be the same kind of thing it's not really a leap forward it's just a different use of the same technology the spaceships though are now the spaceships with their power shield speed and you know firepower kind of thing that that's a, that's a slightly different spin that most um, space games don't have. Sometimes, like in um, Free Space Days, I think it was, you could you could move your power around a little bit, and that was quite a good feature. Um, well, they had some things like that, and I can't remember the details now. It was a long, long time ago now, but um, I quite like that. Now, before people think, oh, I'm macro managing, this is going to be a problem. Remember, your playing style will determine whether you're moving real quick to avoid being fighting or avoid being hit, or just increasing your shields and going full tank mode. Because if you're like, a, I'm driving a brick, I want all my guns to kill things instantly, then you're going to have heavy shields and a, and a you know, really powerful weapon, or maybe lots of less powerful weapons. If you're one of those things that likes to fly around with uh, weaker shields, you'll have more powerful weapons and faster speed. Or maybe you go for super fast speed with weaker weapons and just zzz, which is something they like to do sometimes. So this is all new elements to the gameplay. And um, I'm guessing it's like a bolt on to the actual main engine. In other words, they've taken the engine and then just expanded the functionality by adding code to the engine to support that. So that code there wouldn't be in the engine at all for previous games. It isn't something they've modified in previous games. It's something that they've either brought or worked on in-house and added. You might even find that some of the code is probably borrowed from IDSoft and they've added it to their game engine because it's all owned by Microsoft now. So you might find that is um, where it all comes from, especially with the shooter side of things. Maybe not the the actual spaceship side of things. But Microsoft do own, do own um, other things, products. I mean, they did Freelancer, for example, uh, or rather they published it, so... Uh, that that they do own engines for doing that kind of thing, so they could this it could definitely be something they've had in house and they've let Bethesda use, or it could be something Bethesda have developed themselves. They've certainly had long enough to do it. I mean, Skyrim and Fallout Four were released a long time ago, so they've had plenty of time to work on these things. Now, um, beyond the. Uh, the flying and the ships and the nav mission, well, not nav mission, the exploration and things. Most of the stuff we're seeing, we probably have to see the game to understand most of the improvements in other areas. But, I mean, that watch we saw, it just feels like a pit boy to me. <laughs> so the watch will be probably the moment where you actually get to control your character. And if you see all the cut scenes where you wake up in a mine having had an accident, that's probably the start of the game. And um, when you actually get to get given that watch, that's probably when you're finally allowed to do whatever you want to do. So the, the between there and wherever you are, you know, when you get the watch, well, probably the the Helgen scene or the prisoner scene, you know, escaping from the Imperial City in Oblivion, you know, that kind of thing, or getting out one of the vaults, the intro to the game. That's what I'm expecting. Anyway, since the uh, game itself has an awful lot of new features in it, an awful lot of changes in the game engine, I would say that we're probably um, only seeing little clips of it. But if you look at the scene behind me here, that is brand new. No game Bethesda release has ever done that before. So we'll have to see how well that works. But I do remember rumours last year saying it wasn't very good, but that looks like it's been massively improved to me. So here's hoping it is. But looking at it there, it does look kind of impressive. And with packs that allow you to target individual parts of the ship, 
which is another new feature it says that should be interesting because it means we've got you've got um destructible points now on each ship you can destroy specific points and if points produce you know bonuses like extra speed better shields and you destroy those points then that ship will have less shielding less speed less firepower etc etc so this is all new features of the game engine next time they do a game like um, say elder scrolls or you know six or something like that they won't need that especially but they could probably use that to introduce flying machines and things like that so you can might see the juma airship return for example you know because that was in it was part of the story of morrowind and you see it again in skyrim crashed you know with these uh cat mother little creatures you know inhabiting it you would literally just see the back end of the door on Solstheim in the Dragonborn DLC and you go inside and you can see it's the airship. But yeah. Anyway, so it's, um, looking at it though, with all the factions and things like that, that's just standard Bethesda gameplay, not much change in there. Um, a lot more cinem cinematics by, by the looks of it. But the big areas are space flight, the way they generate the landscapes, which may not be as big a leap forward as it sounds but generating more in real time yeah and then we've got um lighting as well the lighting on this on the system now i don't know whether they're going to tie this to uh nvida nvida's cards or not or maybe um something else but usually this technology develops over time until the point where the graphics card isn't really supplying the code it's coming off a of software and we might be at that stage now where the limitation to 60 frames per second allows bethesda to actually generate this in real time using their own code and not something on a graphics card which is what i hope because the graphics card might allow you to because you know, anything on chip is usually done faster than anything in software but you do reach a point where you have more frames per second than a game needs more power than a game needs so it's dead easy to have the software handle it and then patch the software whenever you like it's much harder to patch a, a piece of physical physical chip so I think this probably will be software and the lighting and everything else they were talking about will be part of the game engine from now on. That means what you see in this game will be in the Elder Scrolls 6 or improved versions of it as well. So it should, it should, be, you should be able to see the difference between Skyrim and um, the Elder Scrolls 6 when it's finally released. But as you notice from the um, anniversary edition of Skyrim, they've already changed the lighting. We're already seeing parts of this game engine in the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. So we could get a feel for what it's going to be like when the game's actually released in September. See you in the next one.